Hey guys, Agro Ninja here, and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 8. In this episode, we take a ride on a train. Everybody aboard that's going on board? It appears so. All right, let's go for a ride. Build a bridge. Take a sneak peek at where we're going to build our mega base. And have a blast setting up some additional crafting items. So let's go get started. So we're over in the workshop and you'll see that I've cleaned up from the previous episode where we had a bunch of random machines kind of haphazardly hooked up with some takes. So we've cleaned all that up because I don't plan to use those anytime soon. I've also rearranged the mob farm. So I got rid of the stairs. I made this a little bit more compact and I hid the transmitter for the on and off lever. On this side, you'll notice that I've installed this ethereal glass. And the cool thing about it is it doesn't allow any light through. The mobs can't pass through it, but players themselves can actually walk right through. So if we need to do any maintenance in there, I can flip the mob farm off and we can go in there, do what we need to do, come out and just flip it right back on. If we head outside, I want to take a quick look at the excavator because I noticed something today that I don't think I've noticed before. And I could be wrong, but you guys can definitely let me know. So we're over by the excavator and what I actually want to look at is this core sample. If we pull this up for a moment and take a quick look at it, you'll see that it shows what the vein is, which is uranium in this case, and it shows you that it's 100% uranium, so there's nothing else here. But what I've noticed is it also has a saturation number, and I'm assuming that means that's the percentage of the yield that you're going to get from this vein, which really explains one of the issues that I've had with a couple of these veins. I didn't really get that many ores. And as an example, we'll take a look at this one. And it shows that the saturation is only 30%. So I think I've mined a few that had really low saturation when we could have just looked for one with a little bit higher. So a bit of a waste, but that's okay. Now we know <laughs> it will look for higher saturated veins in the future. But we're gonna head back inside and I've got uh, a few machines I wanna craft. So now that we're back in the workshop, what I wanna take a look at is setting up a few machines so we can bulk process concrete because we're getting kind of close to working on our mega base i've actually got a location picked out and i'll go show that to you in just a moment but before we do that we're going to take a look at how we can bulk produce concrete and if we take a look at just one of the concretes as an example the way i want to do it i believe is with this chemical injector and to do that, we're gonna to need to be able to bulk craft the powder as well as water vapor, which if we look at the water vapor, we can get it from a decondensator running water through it. So one of the fluid options is water. But we're gonna set up a deconcentrator and flow that into one of those chemical, was it a chemical injection chamber? And we may already have some of these machines. I've built a few things that so don't look like we have one. So we'll see what we need to craft this. Looks like we have everything we need to craft this. So glass, a couple tanks, an energy tablet, and some basic control circuits. All things we've crafted before and used. So we won't go into too much detail on that. We also need another injection chamber. And we'll do a basic factory. So before we do that, we need to build the base machine, which is made from a purification chamber, which is made from an enrichment chamber. Wow, that is a long sequence of stuff that we need. So let's make this real quick and go all the way to that base machine. There's one. Oh, we need some advanced control circuits, uh, which are, we'll just handcraft these. So there's the purification chamber. It looks like we're gonna need some elite control circuits, which I don't have any reinforced alloy. So let's make some real quick. We should be able to make two of the elite control circuits now. That gives us our chemical injection chamber, but we also wanna make the factory version of that. So 
to be basic if I can spell correctly. And now we have the other machine that we need. So let's go ahead and get these set up. So I'm down here working on setting up my, my machines and I heard all these mobs. I don't know what's going on up here. And I, I slept real quick to make it day. Now they're all dying. Oh, now they're coming after me. Ha, this is hilarious. I don't know where they came from. I don't have my sword out right now. Let's see if I can hop up here and grab it real quick. Ha. I, I have no clue where these guys came from. But they're all about dead now. I'll take all the free loot. It was so loud. I was just sitting there making patterns and <laughs> next thing I know. Oh, and now I have a bunch of, oh, let's not mess with those. I don't feel like dealing with those and getting bad omen right now. Let's, let's head back inside. I guess that's the craziness that happens when you don't sleep. <laughs> well, this is where I decided to set up our new machines. The rotary condensatrator has water coming in the back. And the water vapor that we're creating from that water is coming out the top in this advanced pressurized tube and going into our injecting factory. Where I have an importer on the back, so anything that is processed will get pulled into our refined storage system. And if we take a quick peek at these crafters, you'll see I have a pattern for each type of concrete in the game. Now, <laughs> we probably won't use half of those, but I wanted to be able to make them if I did need them. And each one of the machines have three mufflers, max energy, and three speed upgrades. So we should be able to process it quite quickly and we can upgrade it as needed. One other thing that I did over here is set up a way so I can get water from an ender tank instead of setting up one of these water condensators all over the <laughs> base with water around them. I was getting kind of annoyed with them. So I've started removing them and I've got one. And if we take a look real quick, I've been making some upgrades. So we're gonna add a speed upgrade going to add an efficiency tier one and a processing tier one and then we'll put our power back on the top and that should just speed it up a little bit and make it a little bit more efficient make sure we turn our power back on that should be good to go the next issue is going to be getting the concrete powder that we need and i've already created a couple patterns for the white and red concrete powder i will note that each type of concrete powder uses sand and gravel, which we're getting from cobblestone, which we have in large quantities. So that's not gonna be a problem. But each type of powder, depending on what color it is, uses a corresponding dye. Some of these we can get quite easily, like the white dye, we can get that from bone meal, and the red dye, which we can get from beetroot. Another, another one I just thought about would be green. We can get that from cactus, I believe. But some of these, like black dye, for example, will be a little more difficult to get because the primary way we're getting it now in small quantity is from ink sac. Well, that's not efficient at all. So what I think I'm going to work on doing is collecting all the mystical flowers in the world so we can use the petals. So I'll show you real quick the petal to make all the different types of dye. And that'll give us the mystical flowers so we can get into Batania in the future. And yes, we're definitely going to get into Batania. I love Batania. But that is pretty much all I have done at this point. So how about we go and take a quick peek at where we're going to build our mega base. May I present our mega base location? I wasn't planning on doing a water base, but when I found this location, I just had to build in it. This is probably some of the coolest Minecraft generated terrain I've ever seen. There's even this cool little ship. There's tons of coral. And over here, the ocean's really deep and there's these tall spiky columns that come all the way up from the floor of the ocean. The only real negative is this ocean monument, which we'll have to clear out because we definitely don't want to be trying to build around it and get hit with mining fatigue. That would not be fun at all. <laughs> You might notice I did flip our shaders back on. I wanted you guys to be able to see this in all its true glory. It is a really cool biome. 
It is called Lush Stacks, if you're curious. If you guys have any thoughts or suggestions for builds, please let me know in the comments. But we're gonna go ahead and head on back to our starter base and continue on. Hopefully we'll get to doing some building later in this episode, but definitely the next one. We still gotta figure out exactly what blocks we're gonna be using and what we're gonna build before we can get started. So now that we're over at our workshop, we're gonna take a quick peek in this chest and you'll see we've got two of each type of petal from Batania. So now we can grow any mystical flower there is and be able to create any dye that we need for any future concrete powder. And we'll work on setting up a way to farm that in a later episode. If we take a quick peek at our crafting manager, you'll see that we're almost full on space for crafting patterns. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run over here to where our mob farm is and use some of our new wall real estate to install 12 more crafters. And we're just gonna put them on the wall right here, make it four high, three across. We'll pick all those blocks up and then we'll just put all these in place. And then we'll turn them to make sure they're pointed the right direction. And there's one more item I wanna install right here, and that's this advanced black hole unit. And this thing can hold 67,108,864 items. Ooh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> so this, we can use and start using more of these for items that we have in large quantities. And we can interface it with our refined storage system so it appears that it is in our storage system when we're looking at it, but it's actually in this black hole unit. And this one, we're gonna put cobble in it, so you can see I've already kind of done some testing. But we'll run around to the back side where we can install our cable. So we need to make sure we got a cable run into all of these machines. Well, there's, that should have connected our crafters. We'll check them in just a moment. And for this, we're gonna put an external storage bus right there. And on the top, we're gonna to put an exporter and we're gonna tell it to export cobble. And the reason I wanna do this, and it should start filling up. Yeah, see, it's going up now. And the reason I wanna set it up like this, so with the external storage bus, the refined storage system can interface with it. And using this exporter, we can force the system to always put cobble in here. And I have made a few upgrades for this. So we got a stack upgrade and two speed upgrades. So we should see it going up a lot faster now. Oh yeah, see it's going up <laughs> significantly faster now. So we'll let that finish. I've got almost 100,000 cobble. So that's gonna definitely free up some storage space. We should be able to go check on everything now to make sure it is in good shape. So this should show, yes, it shows Significantly more crafting space available. And our drives should be emptying. I don't know where all that cobble is at. Yeah, it looks like it's pulling from here. So it's probably rebalancing because the cobble is probably down here somewhere and it's rebalancing the stuff on these drives. So yes, we're freeing up space. That should keep us going for quite a while. Yeah, you can see we still got 64,000 cobblestone. In well, that's how many we have total. That number's not going to change because it's interfaced with our system itself, but the exporter is gonna force it to always put new cobble into the black coal unit. And I know we have a lot of this industrial hemp fiber, but we're gonna be working on turning this into wool in the near future. So we won't worry about putting that in a black coal unit at the moment. But we should be able to look and see if we have any of the refined storage Block hiders, I think those are called covers. Yes, and it does look like we have some. So we're gonna grab two of those. And we're just gonna cover these up so they're hidden. And I'm gonna call this another project done. <laughs> I think what we're gonna do now is head over to spawn and meet up with our buddy Misfit. 
he has another build that he uh, wants us to put together. So I think that's what we're going to do to finish up this episode. And that's another spawn build project complete. This is probably the largest bridge I've ever built in Minecraft and I think it turned out quite nice. You can see we used a whole bunch of copper and I do think we've decided to let it fully oxidize and see what it looks like. We used these big chains from decorative blocks and made it look like it was tying into the columns on the end. And we've got six support beams in the middle with a whole bunch more chains. We used the modern blackstone wall for the border. We added some glass so you could see down below. And of course the train track running across the middle. If we fly out to the side, you'll see we've got some little decorative touches like these copper vertical slabs. And there's a whole lot of copper work up under the bridge itself. For the most part, the bridge is done, but we do have a lot of decorative touches around the bridge that we need to finish. Like I have done a bunch of bone milling, but that's about it. I would like to change this a little bit so it's more natural into the terrain. We're just kind of running a bit short on time and I wanted to make sure I got this episode out. So we're going to go ahead and go visit our buddy because if we come down here, you'll see the 
train track goes into what appears to be a tunnel. And I guess he's been working on some stuff on the side and has a fully functional train. And he wants to take us for a ride into our spawn town. So we're going to go meet up with him. Well, I see you've uh, built a train here. Yeah, start of one anyways. Are you licensed to drive this thing? Did you go to a course? Um, I'm <laughs> going to plead the fifth. Tem temporary, you know, permit. So do I get to ride in the back? Sure. If you want to hop along and uh, pick you out a seat, and I'll get in the driver's seat. So I'll sit right here on this side. Everybody aboard that's going on board? It appears so. All right, let's go for a ride. <laughs> These trades are so cool. I really wish I would have gotten to the create mod, and I still may at some point. I've had a lot of fun with it. Oh, a little bit of lag there. Yeah, she does Ooh. get a little bit of lag. Don't worry, Ooh. the brakes only work half the time. As long as it's the, the top, uh, half the time when we're going downhill. Oh, a little more lag. Hey, there's my base over there. Ooh, another tunnel. Yep, another tunnel, and if you uh, get ready and look over the waterway as we go across our brand new bridge. That pirate ship is just in the perfect spot. It really is. We could make this look like a port so the boats look like they're actually naturally there coming in. And welcome everybody to spawn. Oh, thanks Please for the ride. Please trying to pull, come to full stop before you uh, exit. Whoops. <laughs> Still working out some bugs. There you go. All right. Thank you for the ride. <laughs> no problem. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and I'm excited to hear what you guys think about the bridge. If you did enjoy the episode, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. This is Agro Ninja, and that's a wrap.